Hey guys, welcome back to The Hubby Report. Today, we'll be discussing this. Yes, this past weekend was the All Japan Hobby and Model Show 2023, which is a yearly event very similar to the Shizuoka Hobby Show, which is another big hobby event uh, every year that happens there in Shizuoka. This one's in Tokyo. And all the big Japanese model kit and tool and paint companies all bring all their stuff and show off all their new and upcoming products. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff here today. In this video, we're going to be talking about everything that Bandai had to show off. I do want to do a second part, a second video that's going to be talking about all the Kurubukiya stuff because there was a lot of really cool stuff there as well. All the other companies were there also. I'm not really going to touch too much on a lot of the other stuff because in these videos I'm not going to be like super comprehensive in the coverage of absolutely everything. I did pretty comprehensive coverage of everything there at Shizuoka. At this show there was some cool new stuff and that's what I kind of want to focus on on basically kind of what is the new stuff that was announced um, because there was a lot of stuff shown that uh, has already been announced before. We already kind of knew, knew that it's coming out. Uh, we may have like some new prototypes of some of the kits like that uh, to see but I want to just kind of focus on a lot of the more noteworthy things and um, especially talking about in the Gunpla here there is going to be some other announcements that were just some recent announcements that I want to talk about they weren't necessarily shown off there at uh, the hobby show but we'll get into all that here for today's video let's start off with of course the big news which is the new Master Grade kit that we have coming out which is the Master Grade Gundam Narrative uh, this is not coming out in December it, it was a little bit misleading because there was an image there that showed something about uh, the 12th month uh, and so I've seen a lot of reporting online saying that it's coming out in December. Uh, from what I can tell looking at it, it looks like it's saying that more information about the release will be coming in December, so probably we're looking at the beginning of next year is when this is actually going to be released. Although we have the full prototype there, as you guys can see, it even has all the markings and everything on it. We even have the runner there behind it. It's showing the Psycho Frame runner, which a lot of you guys who also have been maybe seeing online, people have been talking about the fact that the Psycho Frame runner there is labeled i guess some people were taking like really close-up photos of it and you could see that it was labeled just psycho frame not specifically for the narrative gundam and that's leading some people to think that there's going to be another new unicorn kit maybe coming out in the future as well that they're going to use this new runner for uh, i'm not too sure yet i haven't really looked at it that much in depth and i also just kind of <laughs> we don't really know what's going to be coming out until it comes out, so I don't really need to focus too much on it. But we do know that the narrative of Gundam is coming out uh, as the next Verka, and I'm really excited about it. It's not something that I would have guessed. Uh, if you asked me what I think the next Verka is going to be, it definitely wouldn't have even been probably in like the top 15 of my guesses. Uh, so I like being surprised. I do really like this design as well. The HGUC Narrative Gundam C Packs is uh, a kit that I really enjoyed quite a lot. I really liked that kit. And as we can see with this one, it comes with the Psycho Frame that you can have in there to make it into the C Packs, or you can have the Psycho Frame uh, parts left out, I guess, and that would basically allow you to make it as uh, similar like as we would see with the A Packs and the B Packs versions of the HGUC kit, so it's very uh, easy to assume that probably we're going to be getting either the A and or B packs parts uh, sets as like P Bandai exclusives for the MG at some point in the future. I would say that's very likely and uh, I look forward to it. I hope that they do because there's some really cool stuff, especially the Apex for how big that's going to be in MG form. It's going to be massive, but I think it'll be really cool. So hopefully Bandai will actually make it. Uh, but I am looking forward to this release. I think it looks great. Uh, I'm sure it's maybe not something like a lot of you guys probably also like me wouldn't have guessed it. I'm sure I've seen some people online also just talking about kind of like with a general sentiment of like who asked for this. But I mean honestly, yeah, there's other things that I maybe would have liked Bandai to make. Like the GPO one, for example, is is one that I think I would put probably pretty high on my list of kits that I think would make a good candidate for an MG Verka because it would give Bandai an opportunity to basically make a 2.0 of the GPO one and then make it as a Verka kind of at the same time. I think would be quite cool. But you know, there's always going to be more releases in the future. This is what we're getting for the time being, and I'm really excited about it. I think it looks really awesome. So. I'm looking forward to that release. Still no any announcement about any just kind of standard MG, one that's not a Verka or an MG EX or an MG SD. Uh, so we'll have to wait. Hopefully maybe sometime next year we'll get uh, Bandai to return to making just kind of a regular MG, uh, but we'll see. All right, next up then, of course, the other big news was the HGCE Destroy Gundam. Bandai teased this with a kind of teaser image uh, showing some wrecked uh, BQs, I think is how that's pronounced. I've never been too sure. Uh, but a lot of people kind of assumed just based on the teaser image that it was going to be the Destroy Gundam. I have my doubts because I thought, are they really going to make that? Because I know it's going to be a very big 
uh, mobile suit and in fact they are going to make it and is going to be very big they've advertised that it's going to be 39 centimeters tall so that's like you know pretty big pretty sizable kit uh, and the price also reflects that. So this one, we do have the release date and the price for it. It's supposed to be coming out in March for 13,000 yen. That's price before tax. And then we'll also come back to talking a little bit more about the price because there's a little kind of mini rant discussion that I want to have regarding that uh, afterwards. But just regarding the kit itself, I think it, it's pretty cool that they're actually making this very large design. It's not like one of my favorite designs for me personally. I'm looking forward to checking it out just because it's always fun to build something as unique as how big and interesting as that kit is. And it has a sort of somewhat like half transformation even as well. Tons of beam effect parts there, as you can see in the images, they're showing off all of the beam effects you're gonna be getting with that. And although it is gonna be very large, you know, don't expect it to be super duper detailed, even though there's plenty of space because you have these big massive parts, there's plenty of space where more detail could have been added, but at the end of the day, it's still an HG. So do keep that in mind, that even though it's a big and expensive kit, you know, don't expect it to be super detailed because it still uh, aesthetically has to blend in with other HG kits, which, you know, Typically, especially HGC kits don't have a ton of like surface detail on them. That's just not how they look. So that's why this looks the way that it does. I've seen some people talking about how a, a big expensive kit like this can have so little surface detail. Well, it kind of makes sense considering that it's an HG. It's something that I think it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's perfectly fine, but I think that uh, it definitely looks really cool. It's gonna be really fun. Just like I said, if nothing else, just for the building experience of building something that large, it's sort of like building a mega size, I guess, in a way, but it's going to be really cool. Now, uh, unfortunately, it inevitably happens every time there's an announcement of especially a more expensive kit like this, is that people get to start talking about the price of it and especially talking about how much a kit like this is going to cost from retailers here in the US. And so I want to talk briefly about that just because I've explained it before and I would feel like it makes sense to most people, but I still see this discussion online. When we have the MSRP given for a kit from Bandai, that's the MSRP for in Japan. So take for example, I'm just gonna use the different numbers just to make it easier for us. Say the MSRP is 10,000 yen, that roughly translates to you know about $80 US, something like that. And so unfortunately what happens is people will take that MSRP amount and pop it into a currency converter and say, like I said, it comes out to maybe $80, something like that then they kind of get mad when that's not what the price is for it here in the US, for example. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, and that is that kit, when Bandai sells that kit to uh, stores in Japan, let's say they'll sell it to Yodobashi Camera or whatever other store uh, there in Japan for 5,000 yen. And MSRP is listed at 10,000 yen. So that means that 5,000 yen in between if that's what the store sells it for that's the store's uh, margin of profit right on that case so in that case that's a quite high margin uh, but you guys get what I mean Bandai sells it to the store and then the store sells it for MSRP and whatever is in between there is the store's profit. So that said, the price of that kit for Bandai selling that to a store in Japan is different from the cost of that kit, Bandai US selling that to a store here in the US. So if in Japan, Bandai charges a store uh, 5,000 yen per kit, here they may charge 6,000 yen or what that would be converted to. Anyway, the equivalent of that uh, per kit to the stores here. So the kit costs more for stores in here to buy because they're buying that once it's already shipped to America from Bandai US. So obviously Bandai is working into that price, the shipping and logistics cost of getting it from Japan to the US. Uh, and that's passed on to the retailers here. And the retailers here obviously have to make a profit because they're in business as well. So that is also added onto it. So that's why, you know, once you get to all that, the kit price is gonna be more expensive here in the US generally. And for like HG kits, MG kits even, it's a smaller amount that we're talking about, so the difference is less noticeable. But on a bigger, more expensive kit, it's a larger difference, and that's where people kind of get hung up uh, for a kit like this. For example, the HG Destroy Gundam, like we're talking about, the list price is um, 13,000 yen. Yeah, you'll probably see stores in Japan selling it for like 12, around 12,000 yen. Uh, but, you know, that's not, what you should expect to pay for it overseas. You know, you can get it in Japan for much cheaper and you have to have it sh shipped over here and you're paying uh, with the shipping amount added, it's gonna end up being kind of about the same, uh, if not even more, just because of how much overseas shipping is at the moment, especially for a kit this large, you're probably better off just buying it from a US retailer. Yeah, you're gonna be paying more than if you buy it in Japan, but you're not paying that shipping cost by yourself. It's just worked into the price 
uh, of the kit already that you're buying. So, I mean, I know it's a kind of should be a fairly obvious thing, but unfortunately, like when these kits come out, when these announcements come out, you always see people talking about like, oh, why is it so much at X store here in the US compared to this price that I got when I popped the MSRP into the currency converter? And it's not anywhere near that. Yeah, it's, it shouldn't ever be anything near that. It's, I mean, I would be very surprised if it is. And also, one other point to make to you guys is that Bendai here in the US has map pricing, which means that they have a kind of limit to how low stores here that they sell to can sell it. Now, if a store here in the US is getting their products not from Bandai directly, but from other some other distributor, they may not have to deal with that. At least for Bandai products, uh, for stores that bought from Bandai, Bandai sets a minimum price that they are allowed to sell that kit for. So even if a store wanted to charge like less and make like zero profit on the kit, they can't do that if they want to continue to work with Bandai. So anyway, uh, the whole other kind of topic, but I just thought it was worth kind of explaining to you guys. Uh, even if you already know, if you see people talking about it, maybe you can kind of pass the word along or something like that. But anyway, uh, otherwise, as far as anything else uh, new, of course, they had the new Build Fighter, uh, Build Fighters Metaverse stuff all uh, on display there. They also had the SDW's Heroes kits, the new uh, kits in those lines, the uh, Tenka Muso Dai Shogun, the 78th Musha Gundam, and the Kimetsu Gundam are some new SDW Heroes kits that are coming out, for example. But uh, the HD Destroy and the MG Narrative Gundam were like the two big Gundam announcements that we had uh, from this show. Now, there are some other couple of releases that were on display there, of course. So some P-Bandai releases. The big P-Bandai announcement that a lot of people seem to be pretty excited about is the HD Gundam The Witch for Mercury Expansions Part Set Number 1. Now, because this is labeled as number one, should we expect that there's going to be a number two possibly in the future? I don't know. Uh, that's just kind of how they label it sometimes. So it's kind of hard to say, but this is coming out in January for 2,000 yen. Features mostly parts for the Darabalde, but there's also some new weapons for the Faract, uh, the Michaelis, and then new effect parts for Ghoul's Delanza rather than the original uh, clear green beam effect parts for the beam weapon there. It has uh, clear pink beam effect parts for that. So. Uh, anyway, it's some cool expansion parts there for your HD Witch Mercury kits. If you guys want to check that out, there's also the uh, new version of the P Bandai Epion coming out. This is also not new, but they had it on display there the Sturm und Dragon unit, which is basically has like a set of mini wings attached, aside from the wings on its back, it has some like smaller wings attached onto its arms, which is kind of interesting. So, some other different uh, new parts there for that. And there was also the HD Witch from Mercury, uh, Lefrith Anokta there. This is another one that was uh, announced a few weeks ago, I feel like, but it was there on display. So you guys can check that out. Um, personally, not too much into the design of either of those kits, really. <laughs> but uh, there is a lot of interesting features there uh, with the Anokta that uh, should make that pretty cool for any of you guys that do decide to pick up that kit for yourself. There was also some, some uh, Gundam-based exclusive stuff there on display that is new. The MG Zaku Cannon Zeta Gundam version. This is coming out uh, for 6,000 yen. There is a Gundam-based exclusive. Like I said, it's basically just a recolored version of the Master Grade Zaku Cannon, which is an awesome kit. Can't say that I like that particular color scheme too much, but it's an awesome kit uh, nonetheless. So I can highly recommend that. There's also the MG Gundam Nadle coming out for 5,000 yen. So it's your opportunity to get just get the Nadle Gundam on its own without getting the full Master Grade Virtue kit. We were kind of expecting, hoping that Bandai might eventually sell the Nadle on its own. It looks like they've gone with uh, making it as a Gundam base exclusive, which kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, it would be nice if it was more widely available, but uh, for any of you guys who do really want to pick up just the Nadle, you will be able to get that, but that said, if you have to get it shipped over from Japan, you're probably paying, you know, that much for just shipping that one kit, or you could just buy just the Virtue here for probably a similar amount, I'd imagine something like that, but anyway, one more here is the HG Build Strike Galaxy Cosmos Plavsky Particle Clear version as well there for 1,900 yen for that. Okay, now uh, there was also some Gundam Next Future releases that were shown there. These are also, I think most of these were, again, stuff that has already been pre previously announced, but it was on display there for the first time. So we have the Master Grade uh, Freedom Gundam version 2.0 and the Justice Gundam, uh, both in their real type colors. So quite interesting color schemes there for those. Interesting recolors, 5,000 yen for the Freedom version 2.0, 5,300 yen for the Justice Gundam there in real type colors. We had the Entry Grade Arc 782 Gundam in classic colors. That owns for 1,000 yen. And the Zaku Plakun 
for 800 yen. Looking forward to checking that out. The Gunpla Kun kit was a lot of fun. Uh, the plastic on it being that Limex plastic is a bit mm, less than ideal. I do prefer just regular original polystyrene plastic, uh, but it's certainly interesting and the, the kit is fun and cheap, so that's good. Uh, and the HG got an aerial uh, recirculation color. It's kind of one of these interesting, like funky uh, recolors there of the Aerial Gundam, and that's going to be for 1,300 yen. We also had some China exclusive kits announced that I just want to briefly mention about a uh, Bandai China exclusive MGEX Strike Freedom Gundam Midnight Coating version coming out for $575 roughly for that, so that's pretty expensive and definitely looks very premium there, uh, but that's coming out uh, in May of next year. Also, it's going to be the uh, cross contrast color versions of some MG releases here. Once again, the Master Grade Freedom version 2.0, the Justice Gundam, and the Providence in this case also coming out for $55, $58, $60 uh, respectively, roughly there for the price conversions on those from Bandai China. Cross contrast colors is an interesting mix of like replacing some of the colors with clear colors and replacing some of the colors with metallic colors. It's gonna be like metallic injected. You can tell by the price that it's uh, metallic injected and not anything metallic coated. Anything coating uh, jacks up the price quite a bit. And so considering these are basically at uh, essentially MSRP uh, for those kits, that means that they're just uh, recolored with diff just different color plastic. So, uh, but those do look quite interesting. Again, yeah, very funky. All right, and the last thing here, which was announced recently, is the Metal Build Camphor. Coming out on February for 36,000 yen. Being a Metal Build kit, obviously it's gonna be a bit more on the expensive side, and this is not a plastic model. This is the only one thing of like a, a figure news that I wanted to talk to you guys about just because I thought it was worth mentioning. Pretty cool new accessory there for this as well. Uh, obviously with it being a metal build, it has a lot of really interesting new kind of slightly different features from what we're used to and details. And one of the most notable things there though is the new backpack equipment that it has for holding the chain mine, which is kind of interesting, so. All right, so next up, let's talk about some of the non-Gundam related uh, new plastic model releases coming out from Bandai as well. And again, this is not going to be uh, comprehensive of every single thing that they have there, just some of the more noteworthy things that I wanted to share with you guys. Like I said, so the 30 Minute Sisters stuff, we had some new 30 Minute Sisters stuff there on display. The Tsukiruna DS Innocent form, I think is the correct pronunciation for the name for that one. This is coming out in February for 3,500 yen. Basically looks like a kind of uh, recolor and combination of the Lirinel and Laranel kits that we had before in like white and pink. Now it's in this kind of like black and gold color scheme, which does look pretty cool. I have to say has a uh, quite interesting weapon there for that as well. So that should be an interesting release out in that line. We've also got the uh, P Bandai release here of a new 30 Minute Sisters release of the Stipla Steroid Ardito form. This one is like a combination, once again, a combination of stuff. It's like a combination of 30 Minutes Missions and 30 Minute Sisters kind of together into this release, which looks very, very much like the Griefin the Frame Arms Girl kit. I have to say there's a lot of very familiar kind of features between the two uh, with that one. So if you're a fan of the Griefin, like I am in particular, it's one of my favorite Frame Arms Girls designs. Uh, this one does look pretty cool as well. The helmet obviously is a pretty uh, nice and interesting feature there with that. You also had some new hair parts announced. Hair parts are usually sold in sets here in the US, but uh, if you can get them individually, uh, the MSRP on those is uh, 600 yen each. That's volume nine of the 30, 30 Minute Sisters uh, hair parts there. One last thing for 30 Minute Sisters is the option parts set 11 and 12. That's the Fang costume and Reaper costume, uh, respectively. Skin color is color A for those, just for your guys' reference. And those are 1500 yen each. So some cool new uh, body parts sets. That would be like just the torso and the tops of the arms and legs uh, for those sets. The legs and head and obviously everything, our arms, hands, it's all like kind of sold separately. So just if you wanted to swap body parts there for those. And then going into 30 Minutes Missions, we have some new option parts and sets coming out in the 30 Minutes Missions line. Uh, we do have the new version of the Atcherby. This is the Type C version. It's just like a gray version of the kind of female shaped. So it's not in the 30 Minutes Sisters line because it is just fully mecha but it is kind of very similar anyway, uh, coming out for 1,780 yen. Yeah, some of the other option sets and stuff we had there was the option parts set number 14, which is the multi-cloth for 980 yen. Really cool looking new kind of like cloth effect parts that you can use on the kits. And it looks like there's a nice range of those that you have in that set. Although I think this is probably one of those that buying multiple of the set will probably allow you to 
get like kind of the full effect of it if you really want to use those on your kit. So considering that the set is relatively inexpensive too, I think it'd probably be a good idea to get more than one of that. We also had set 15, which is the multi-vernier, multi-joint set here uh, for 780 yen. One of the better looking option sets, I think, for the 30 minutes missions line in terms of adding more kind of detail parts to your kits. Uh, I think these do look pretty cool there to add some like kind of vernier details and things like that onto your 30 minutes missions or Gumpla or whatever you want really. You could add those to your frame arms kits if you wanted to. Another kind of detail up set here for 30 minutes missions or again you could use it for really kind of anything whatever you want but it's 3D metallic seal set number two there for 480 yen. Basically you're gonna get a sheet of some like metallic seal stickers. These are like the 3D metallic stickers so that means that they're like thicker so they have like a clear plastic coating over the top of what is essentially like a, a foil sticker but you get these really thick uh, metallic stickers which are good for adding like kind of camera detail or like detail that looks like lights kind of basically is what they're kind of meant to simulate there you can use them very more creatively if you want but those are interesting and then we've got the 30 minutes missions uh, x vehicle horse mecha coming out for 1080 yen if you want to have your mecha model riding on a mecha horse you can do that here with that one. Kind of looks very similar to like the SDW Heroes uh, horse kits that we've had out in that uh, SD Gunpla line. But And then we've got a new version here also coming of the 30 Minutes Missions Provadel. This is the Type Command 02 for 4,000 yen. It's like this big mecha that you can have your regular size 30 Minutes Missions mecha riding on. It's kind of interesting. Uh, this one being in mostly just like a different color scheme, sort of like the Forestieri kind of one and two. There's a couple little different parts in there, mostly just a different uh, color. Other than that, we do also have a P Bandai announcement for uh, what is, I think, maybe only like the second or third maybe P Bandai release of a 30 minutes missions kit. They don't really do them too often, but uh, there has been a couple. This is the Seal Nova Custom coming out for 2600 yen, which I have to say it does look pretty cool. Sort of reminds me a bit, just I think, this, like just the overall shape and proportions and everything of it somewhat remind me a bit of like the Shinanju or like the Shinanju Stein just because of the color but like the shape just kind of reminded me a bit more of the Shinanju kind of interesting like a 30 minutes missions version of that I guess but it does look quite cool I have to say I'm sure that if I were to actually break it down and look at it kind of part by part it's probably something that you can just make with parts of various 30 minutes missions kits that exist already that's generally what they are with these uh P Bandai releases and they might be uh, like different colors or whatever but uh, anyway, that does look pretty cool, I have to say. Next up, uh, moving to a new Pokepala Quick release. We had the Pokepala Quick Squirtle announced, so you can finally uh, complete your set of the three Kanto starters from the original Pokemon Red and Blue here with this one. Unfortunately, they did not opt to go for the sunglasses version of the Squirtle, which I think would have been very fun, or at the very least, like a more interesting pose for the Squirtle. I, I was quick to point out, and I think a lot of people also noticed that the pose on the Squirtle is kind of meh, I don't know. But uh, hopefully they'll do another version, hopefully one with the sunglasses, I don't know. Uh, but it would be kind of nice to see Squirtle, which is such a awesome classic, you know, starter Pokemon. Uh, but that's gonna be joining the Pokepala Quick lineup. And then in Ultraman news, Ultraman Suit Jack uh, Action is coming out. Action being that this is not a kit that has the LED feature. Like some of them have the LED feature and some of them do not. The Action versions would be the ones that replace the LED feature with a bit better articulation in the torso section. Uh, here for Jack. This one's coming out for 6,500 yen in March. Obviously a bit more expensive for this because it's going to be pretty large. The regular Ultraman suits are, you know, kind of standard size. This one's going to be, you know, that much bigger and it's got this big massive axe weapon there as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this suit joining the lineup because I really enjoy these kits quite a bit and this one obviously is, is pretty cool. So that'll be fun. A couple new things out from the Sin Duality series here. The Figure Eyes Standard Ellie is going to be the second release in the Figure Eyes Standard line of character kits from the Sin Duality series and then we've also got a new version of the Daisy Ogre, the Daisy Ogre Al Altar. That one's gonna be coming out for 4200 yen for that one. Have you guys built the Daisy Ogre kit? Uh, what do you guys think about it? Or the Figure Eyes Standard kit uh, Noir is the first one out in that line. Let me know your guys thoughts. I've not built either and I'm kind of interested but I, I don't know kind of if it's something that I think that I'm really gonna enjoy that much or not but if you guys have and you have any kind of feedback on those, let me know in the comments. Uh, in Macross news, we had the HGYF21 there on display coming out in January for 
4,300 yen. There is also a separate water slide decal sheet that you can get for that if you want to use water slide decals. If you prefer that decal set, it's gonna be 700 yen. So a uh, total, if you were to get both, about 5,000 yen uh, for the set. But yeah, it looks like a pretty cool kit. I've also not tried any of the uh, Bandai, well, they only have just the one out so far. Uh, this one is going to be the third release out in Bandai's new HG lineup of Macross kits. So also let me know your guys' thoughts if you built the uh, YF-19, I wanna say, is the first one, the brown one that came out, is that right? But I've heard a lot of good things, so if you guys also had a good experience with that, share that with me in the comments section. And in Kyokai Senki news, we had the HG Aaron Rhino coming out in February for 2,500 yen. Bandai is uh, keeping up the releases. I think they probably don't have too many more HG Kyokai Senki kits to be coming out on the way, but this one does, I will say, look pretty cool. And one thing that they're really pushing a lot with this one and then the other most recent release is that they're making them very compatible for adding parts and stuff onto them. So uh, they're like really highlighting that it has a lot of hard points around on it for customizing by adding more weaponry and armor and everything onto there if you want to do that. So certainly would be a really interesting uh, platform kit for adding a bunch of stuff onto it. Uh, or, you know, not, not necessarily a bunch of stuff. Maybe you only want to add a couple things here and there, but uh, certainly interesting in that respect. All right, then uh, P Bandai release of the Dunbine is coming out for 3,500 yen. Bandai is kind of continuing this sort of recent trend of doing new takes on like old designs. So we have this like with the Dragonar, for example, um, they're coming out with a new HG Votoms kit. And now the Dunbine is just kind of another example of this uh, trend that Bandai is doing. And I think there's a lot of people that are really enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to the Votoms kit to be coming out uh, from Bandai in HG form. And speaking of other Super Robot stuff, we have the HG Super Robot Wars Huckabane Mark III coming out for 4,500 yen. Really looking forward to this as well. If you are not into Super Robot Wars, uh, like me, I don't really know anything much about it, uh, but it's pretty easy to understand if you are looking at that and thinking, didn't that already come out? Because yeah, the Mark II and the Mark III uh, just at a glance look very similar. And obviously they're in like the same color scheme. Uh, but the Mark III is a different new release, completely different. Um, I don't know if it's going to share any of the parts from the Mark II, uh, to be honest. But it's certainly sharing in the same kind of style and colors, just a new design with some pretty cool weapons and gimmicks and stuff for that. I have to say I'm really looking forward to that. The Mark II is awesome. And the HD Super Robot Wars from Bandai has been a lot of fun overall. All the kits that I've built from that series uh, recently have been really, really nice. So looking forward to that. And for that, they also had there the P-Bandai HG Am Gunner, which is like a separate kind of rideable, massive cannon accessory, uh, sort of like uh, rideable vehicle weapon platform kind of thing, I guess. I don't know if that's how you could describe it. Um, this one advertised as 39 centimeters long. It's kind of interesting how the HG Destroy Gundam at 39 uh, centimeters tall. And this one at 39 centimeters long. Uh, so, I don't know, just kind of interesting coincidence there. But 7,000 yen, so it's gonna be pretty pricey, of course, uh, and being a P-Bandai kit, you know, uh, it could be more, uh, but uh, for how large that is, that does kind of make sense. It does look pretty cool, though. 39 centimeters, again, it's gonna be like pretty good size for that, so. Uh, last couple of things here is the Planosaurus uh, Pteranodon coming out in January for 14, 150 yen, 1,450 yen. This also looks really cool, especially in the skeleton form, which makes me really, really hope that Bandai will do some sort of pterosaur model kit in the imaginary skeleton line, because when it comes to just a skeleton model kit, the imaginary skeleton model kits are just nicer, and because that's the main thing. The main thing with the Planosaurus kits is that you can make it either as like the dinosaur form with everything on the outside, or you can build it without those parts and have it just be the skeleton. So that's kind of the gimmick of this line. If you just want a nice skeleton, then the imaginary skeleton kits are awesome for that. And so I really, really hope that they'll do some sort of pterosaur there, whether it be a pteranodon or something else. I don't know what it would be, but this release, especially in like the walking form, not the flying form, but it has parts to be able to just make it walking. It looks really cool. So that's gonna be coming out. And then the last thing here, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Figure Eye Standard Amplified Chaos Soldier. It's coming out in January as well for 4,200 yen. That also looks really cool. I have to say, I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! I've never been into Yu-Gi-Oh! at all. Um, and if you, if I just saw this, my first reaction was, I thought it looked like something from Final Fantasy, which is also a series that I don't have any uh, history with at all, but uh, it looked like 
it's something out of Final Fantasy or something, but uh, it does look like it's going to be a really awesome kit there. So I'm looking forward to building that one. I think that's going to be a pretty cool release. So, all right, that wraps up everything that I wanted to talk about uh, there from Bandai. Like I said, there was a couple of other things that uh, was there on display from Bandai, but you guys can check out uh, some more coverage online. There's a lot of like blog posts and things like that that kind of have photos of everything in like extreme detail. But I just wanted to go through some of the stuff that uh, I think looks pretty cool and that I'm looking forward to building and sharing with you guys in future reviews. But for now, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Like I said, I will be doing a part two video where I wanna talk about all the stuff that kotobukiya has got coming out as well that they had there at the hobby show. So stay tuned for that. As always, guys, if you wanna check out some of this stuff for yourself, anything that's available for pre-order or not right now, some of it may not be available for pre-order at the moment, but it will be in the near future. You can check the link in the video description to USA Gundam Store. Obviously, aside from all this stuff, we've got all sorts of cool stuff there already. If you don't feel like pre-ordering something, if you just want to buy something right now, uh, you can go and do that. So check the link in the video description. As always, guys, thank you so much for liking the video, commenting, subscribing, whatever you guys uh, feel like doing to help support me and my channel. I really appreciate it. Until next time, have a great day, guys.